Hi everybody, it's Suzette Morrow and I'm your art guide on the side. Have you ever wanted to draw your favorite celebrity or musician and you couldn't quite make it look like them? Well today I'm going to show you how to use the grid system so that you can get a good likeness of whoever it is that you're drawing. If you have a printed out picture of your favorite celebrity or musician or whoever you want to draw, then get it and let's get started and do it together. I want to say that using the grid method is really helpful in training your eye to be able to see things more carefully, values more carefully, and where things are placed. Why use a grid method versus tracing? Well, tracing has its place. So if you do trace something, then that's, you know, that's fine because you still have to learn how to see, to shade it, to paint it, to do other things with it. Where things get a little bit tricky is when somebody uses a traced image and then they uh, put it into their portfolio, let's say for instance, for college or they use it for an art show or especially if it's a juried art show then that's where it gets a little bit controversial and it's hard for the person to learn from just tracing an image. When you use a grid method, you're learning to look for these little tiny nuances and that's what helps you grow as an artist. Kind of think of it like as a practice for a sport. When you need to practice, let's pick basketball, you need to practice making your free throws from the line and you have to learn all of the different things associated with making it go into the basket. Hooray! And once you have that memory of how much you push on the ball and where you move your wrist, all of those things matter, right? To make it into the basket. The same thing is true when you're learning how to draw and you're doing these things slowly that may take a little bit more time, but each time that you're doing those steps, you're learning better what you need to do to make the thing happen that you're looking for to happen. So let's get started and use this as an exercise in our sketchbook. Not to sell, not to put in our college portfolios, uh, but for our own learning. And that's why I'm going to use Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Step let's what you need started. to do. First of all, you need to choose your resource. Today I'm going to do this picture of Keanu Reeves as my fandom. Make sure that whatever picture that you are doing, that you have a full range of values in that picture. I also printed it out in a larger format, but without lightening it. So can you see how this picture does not have the full range of values? It's all medium and dark. If you use your range of values, can you find the lightest light in this picture of him? Not really. So if your picture is too dark, and I suggest also using black, white, grays are make, going to make it easier for you to draw, then you might have to lighten the values before you print it out so that you can get a full range of values. All right, so we've got our picture. Now, you're going to need a ruler and this is where I see a lot of problems. In making your grid, round it up to the inch. Okay, so our picture here is uh, five and a half inches, but we're gonna go to five inches because if we don't use this part of the picture, it's okay. We don't really need to see his back, do we? So we're going to use the inch increments of your ruler. Now, your grid has to be straight on your picture and on your paper. If your grid is not straight, then you're going to uh, make it harder for yourself to get it accurate. All right, I'm going to use red so that we can see it better on the picture. You can use your pencil or a ballpoint pen, whatever you have available. Now I'm going to the five inch. Now see how the one inch right here is at the end of the ruler. Some rulers have a little bit of space before they start your inch measurement. So make sure that your ruler starts at one inch at the end of the ruler so that your measurements are exactly one inch apart. 
Now it doesn't mean around one inch, it means right at that long line that is where the inch mark is. So see that long line next to the number is one inch. Not around it, but that's right on it. Okay, now here's the thing that'll help you make keeping it straight, is you're going to slide your ruler down. Don't flip it, don't move it, but slide it down so you're still at the five inch mark at the end of your picture and you are making your one inch marks at the one inch. So I have it at the four, the three, the two, the one, and at the end of the ruler. Remember, we're not gonna use this last row, okay? So now you have a mark at the bottom and you have a mark at the top and they are the same. Now play connect the dots. You're going to take your ruler and put it on the top little mark, put it on the bottom little mark, and hold your ruler with your hands spread apart like this. If you hold your ruler just at the top, then by the time you put pressure on the bottom, it's going to move your ruler and then your line's not going to be straight. So make sure that you have it on the mark. And I'm a lefty, but you can do it with your opposite hand as well. And you could start from this side if you want. But you're going to put your ruler on the mark, but then hold it down so you're holding it firmly on your picture on both top and bottom and then make your line all the way down. Okay, now the reason we were using a grid, which has been used since the Egyptian times, holding my ruler really tight, is because it helps us to see exactly where something is in a small area so that we can draw it accurately. If we're just freehanding it, which is fine too, uh, then we're not going to be using a grid method. You're just going to go by looking at your image. If you want something like to have a real likeness of someone or you want to draw something really complicated, then you might want to use a grid system on that picture. Okay, so I have all of my vertical lines on my picture and now I'm going to go the opposite direction. So we're going to now put the ruler at the beginning of your picture and not around, but right on it. And then mark it at the one where the long line is, two inches, three inches, four inches, five inches, six inches, seven inches, and then eighths down here. Do we really need that? No. So we're gonna stop at seven inches and then we're gonna scoot over to this side. We're gonna make sure our ruler is on the edge of the picture, not somewhere down further. Then all of our marks are gonna be off. Put your ruler at the edge of the picture and mark at your one inch, two inch, three inch, four, five, six, and remember we decided to stop at seven. Now, depending on how small your picture is, is how small you're going to make your grid. And if you're going to enlarge the grid, make the picture bigger, then we're gonna talk about ratio in another video. All right, so now we're gonna go across connecting the dots. So we have our first dot this one and our second dot there. We're gonna lay our ruler on it. And again, spread out your fingers and hold your ruler down so it's far apart. If I held my ruler all down here, then it would not work out because by the time I moved my pen up here, it would move the ruler. So super important if you want to hold your ruler still to hold your hand across the ruler far apart, putting pressure on your hand so that the ruler can't move while you're making that mark. Now we're going to go to the second one. and keep going down. Keanu Reeves' girlfriend uh, is Alexandra Grant. She's an artist as well. She has 
some uh, YouTube videos if you want to check out her work. It's really cool how she mixes text and art together. She came to the college that I got my master's degree from, Azusa Pacific, and uh, gave us a talk on some of her projects. Super nice of her to do that. Okay, so we have our grid all the way down and across. Remember, we're not gonna use this row, so let's just squiggle right through it. We don't need it. And we don't need this bottom row where the bottom of his shirt is, so we're not gonna use that. So we have the number of columns across and down is what we need to have on our paper. So we're going to be working with one, two, three, four, five, right, five and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down, five by seven. So as long as we have five by seven on our paper, we're gonna have the exact same number of square grid as we're going to be drawing. If we were doing Keanu Reeves on our bedroom wall, let's say for instance, which would be kind of interesting, but then we might make this one inch by one inch square, 12 inches by 12 inches, Therefore, you would end up with a big mural of whoever your subject is. Okay? All right. So let's set that aside. Now we need our grid on our paper. I'm going to scoot over an inch so I'm not too close to the binding here on my sketchbook. So I have my mark at the top and mark at the bottom. Okay, now we can start. One, two, three, four five and six. We're going to scoot down. Okay, now if you're going to plan on keeping your drawing on this paper, then try to keep your lines as light as you can. Once you have a very dark mark, if you have a light area in your picture, it's really sometimes hard to get rid of that indentation. So you want to keep your grid lines really light. If you have thin paper and you want to have a very clean surface to do your shading on, then you can just do the grid for your finding where everything belongs in its square and then take it over to the window and trace it onto a clean paper without the grid or you can use a light box for instance. Okay, so we have our, <clears throat> our lines that are going vertical now. Now we're going to do the horizontal lines. So we're going to get our paper. I'm just going to make it on the whole thing. Just zip right on across. If we make it larger, we might go two inches by two inches, say for instance. Make sure your ruler is on the edge of your paper again. A lot of times when I'm teaching this, the problem that people have is that they have not put their ruler at the edge of their paper. And then that creates all of their lines being slightly diagonal, for instance. Or they have not held down their ruler at the front and the back. So some of their lines are crooked like this, or they have um, not used a ruler or they only measured on one side. Like they only put the measurements over here and then they just tried to eyeball, say for instance, if their grid was straight. All right. So now on this one here, we have, here's our one, our two, our three, our four, and our five rows. If you have a big picture, it's a really good idea to put your numbers on them. You can use numbers again if you like, or you can use letters if you want. So if we were doing letters down, this would be A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So we want to have the corresponding thing happening in your drawing as well. So we're going to go here and we're going to go one, two, three, four, and five. 
for these three, these five rows. So we are staying the same here. And then we have A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So we have the same number as we do for our picture, okay? So now here's where it gets fun and it's super uh, easy peasy. Whatever is in the box is what you're gonna draw in your box. So on 3A, we can see that his hair comes into the square just a little bit from the top and then it curves and it goes out almost at the halfway mark. As long as you're paying attention to really carefully looking where is it coming from on one side of the square and how far is it from the top and then where is it going out and you keep following that looking as that space the same then you should do great. So in the first one the three a, his hair is coming out, and with hair it's not that big a deal, right? And then we have his hair going out, and look how far from the corner we are. And then we can see in the next one and two, it's just this triangular part of his hair. And then in the next one, it's almost coming down. So if you just follow your basic square, see how where it's coming out here is where I need to make sure it comes out here. Follow each square until you have all of your lines done. And even though it may seem it's like going to take you a long time, it really goes pretty fast. So I'm in D. Now in this one, you can see where his hair and his collar is. So we're going to have to pay attention to more things happening in this square. In D, we have his hair, and then we have his collar, which comes out almost touching the corner, right, of D and E. And then it comes a little bit above the corner, a little bit above the corner, just a tiny bit. And then we have this line for his shoulder. And then we have it going down to almost. I'm going to speed up the process so that you don't have to listen to me talk to myself while I look back and forth at each one of the squares. But I think it's helpful for you if you talk to yourself while you do this and it helps you to connect what your eyes see with what you're hearing and then what your hand is doing to connect what you see and hear together onto the paper. Don't forget too, if you get to a difficult area, you can divide up a square into four smaller squares and make it easier for you to see where things are within one square. Look for areas that you can re uh, evaluate as you go, comparing if making sure if it's in the center of the square that it's where it's supposed to be, and constantly checking to see if the items are in the right place inside the square as you go. Also, guys, if you have a uh, area like the edge of his face where his skin is lighter than the background then you may be best served if you shade in the negative space where the face is not instead of the positive space where the face is. Don't be afraid to make your background a little bit darker with markings that you can see like almost scribble marks in different directions because mark making is part of being human and one of the things that makes your artwork look human from a human hand is by seeing those marks that you make 
sometimes those are the things that make it most interesting. So if you have a scribble or you have a symbol that you like to use, then in your background would be a place to do that. When you're doing the hair and the eyes and the eyebrows or any area that's dark in your uh, portrait, make sure and use a pencil that's a softer pencil so that you can achieve getting those darkest darks. So in this case, I'm using an ebony pencil, but if you have an 8B or a 6B even, then you'll be able to get the softness of the graphite to make those darkest marks. Keep looking back and forth from your photograph to your drawing and compare what you have with what you need. It's kind of a game of look for the dark, look for the light, look for the dark, look for the light. Going back and forth so that you can continuously try to get that full range of value that you need in your portrait. Hold your pencil from the very back of the pencil so that you can put light pressure on it or you could put heavier pressure on it. And then try to use like little circles or short marks so that you don't get too much of a um, pencil mark when you're doing skin tones. And don't forget to have fun, you guys. This is supposed to be fun. So stop, walk across the room, come back to it and look at it and go, wow, I did this and be excited about it. All right, this is our final product. And I took the photograph away so you can see the final piece and bonus things that you can do with the grid. Thanks for watching.